Hi, this is Natalie with The Fifth Journey. I'm going to be rendering some beeswax today for you. To get the full written out story, go to our blog, thefifthjourney.com, and search for rendering beeswax or beeswax, or click on the bees tab, and you will find the information there if you want more step-by-step -step instructions. So the main thing when you are doing this, you wanna make sure that you're not leaving, you don't have the TV on, you don't have any distractions because wax is flammable so you know they make candles out of it you don't want to walk away you don't want to leave this unattended because you could have a big mess on your hands the other thing is once you use wax or you are melting wax or doing something with it you will not be using those utensils for something else so you want to have a box full of all of your items that are devoted to that to rending your wax or whatever that you are making with your beeswax what i have here is you don't want to go out and spend a bunch of money on some really nice utensils and pots and pans and a double boiler because they're just going to be ruined and you cannot use them for food. So I just have a makeshift double boiler here, just a regular pan. And um, this came in a candle making kit that we got years ago. It's a nice little pitcher. You want to make sure that it is an actual double boiler. You don't want your pan to be on direct heat. So I have some shims in there. If you have a thin cookie cutter, that works as well. But you want to make sure that you have space between this pan and then the inside pan. Because if you don't, then you're really putting direct heat on it. So this is about a two to three step process. And I will fast forward through some of it because it does take some time. You don't want to heat it too fast. You don't want to heat it too hot. When I have the wax in here for the first time, so the outside pot, I have about a half full of water. The inside pot, I have a couple inches in it just for this first step. So you can put quite a bit of wax in there and you just do it a little bit of time because it does melt down and you can add more to it. The wax, we... It takes a while to accumulate. We only have uh, between two to four hives, depending on um, the time of the year, if we lose some to a swarm or if we get one. So we wait until we have one of these large Gladware, I think it's Gladware containers, it's full, and then we put it in there. And I use this for lotion bars. And um, you know, if we have some, some brood comb that we melt down, I will not use that because it doesn't smell very good. So that we put back in the hives for the bees to use, or if we are starting a hive, then we will put it in there to help them with starters. So if you are melting that down, I would not recommend doing it inside because it doesn't smell very good. So if you have a portable gas stove or something that you can do in the garage or outside, I would definitely recommend doing this. Regular, um, regular beeswax just smells like honey. So it's a very nice light fragrance. It doesn't smell, it doesn't, do any of that. Um, I want to show you some different colors. So this is, if you can see it, this is old common. It's kind of squished into the ball, into a ball. So I would not use this for anything if you're making lotion bars or lip balms. And this is very new. So this just was made probably within the last month or so. So this I would use. I don't worry about bleaching it. If you if you want wider comb, you can let sit out in the sun. Um, but it's such a pretty color and it's just a really nice milky buttery yellow when it's done so setting that aside you can hear it is coming to a boil like i said it does take some time and um you don't want to go anywhere and i'm going to have kids kind of coming in and out so we just had a big storm so they kind of come in playing out in the playing out in puddles with my setup you want to have everything set up before you get started so I have wax paper set up because I don't want this all over my counter. I also have plastic on the floor because I want to protect the floor from any spills because it's really hard to get beeswax off. The other thing for the first step, you want to have a plastic container that is flexible and I have a strainer, you can see that I've used it before. So this is something that you will not want to use again for anything else, so it's specific to that. And um, this is for the next step, I will stop the video and replay when I get to the second rendering. When you are doing the first step, the first time I did this, I left it in the pot to cool. You don't wanna do that because you need a flexible size and it was really hard to get out. So when you pour it in here, you can just pop the sides and it comes out really easily. And I'll explain more when we get to that. So I have a slotted spoon. I have just a regular spoon and then a knife. I also find that chopsticks or little wooden sticks work really well for stirring because when I put the spoon in there, it has a lot of surface area, so a lot of wax gets on there. When I'm doing the chopstick, um, it doesn't have as much surface area, you can just wipe it off. Also, toothpicks come in very handy wiping that off. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this down as it's starting to melt. 
And when you put the comb in, if it's full comb, it hasn't been squished at all, it'll go fill up to the top. And as it warms up, it'll melt down. And then you can continue to add more onto it. So being careful not to spill it in. Now if you can hear it boiling, Remember that is the outside pot that's boiling. You do not want it so hot that the liquid inside starts to boil. Beeswax does take a long time to melt down. So that's the last of it. to be clean go ahead and throw that light piece in and this one we'll just put back into the hives now the first step we'll get out most of the yuckies so if there's any pollen if there's any little bits of whatever that came from the hive that will be filtered out on the first step so like I said, it usually only takes two to three steps to get this done. Now I know some beekeepers will do this once a year and they will have a giant stock pot that they do it in. But since we just have the small hives, this works better for us to do it this way. And plus when I'm dealing with hot melted wax, I'd rather have something small to pour than a giant stock pot and trying to pour it into a, a strainer to get out all the bits because you have a greater chance of spilling and making a mess. So from here on, it's I, <laughs> um, I'm gonna fast forward because again, it does take time. You wanna keep an eye on it. So we're back to the next step of step one and Everything is all melted. All the large pieces are done. I have stirred it so there's no large chunks in there. If you can see, there's nothing sticking to it. So I'm just going to wipe that off. It's nice and melted. I have the heat turned off because I'm done with that for now. And then I have my plastic container set aside. I have my strainer ready to go. And I'm going to pick this up carefully as a plastic handle so it is not hot. Since I am on the stove, so get a better grip. Careful not to burn yourself. And then very slowly, and again, if you spill, it's good to have some wax paper, some parchment paper. I'm going to pour it into this um, strainer, straight into that. So if you can see it nice and slow, it's going through. It does catch. most of the pollen and little pieces. You have to slow down a little bit. And then the wax is lighter than the water, so the water will go down to the bottom. And depending on how much you have, you may have to get a bigger container. Give a little bit of a stir. So this is coming to the end of step one. I'm going to clean this out the best I can, basically scraping out because obviously it's not going to wash. This, I'm going to move the particles around, try to get a little bit more of the melted wax out. Also, and I didn't say this earlier, the wax will have some residual honey in it. So when you do this step, the honey does melt down and when the wax comes up, to the top of the water and hardens. When you take it out, the honey will be out of it. So you'll rinse it off and I'll show you that part when we come back. And then I'm just gonna throw this away. 
So this is like the first step. You can kind of see a little bit of the sludge. Hopefully you can see it from that far away. I don't want to carry over there and put it on the floor. This will take several hours to harden and I'll be back when we're ready to do the next step. Okay, we are back. It is hardened and you can see how the water is pretty yucky. And this was the bottom. So the top, you can still see a little bit of spots in there, but the bottom has a lot of stuff that I need to filter off again. So let me kind of show you. So see all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape all of that off because that is not something we want to use and dispose of it. Then I'll break this into chunks and we'll melt it down again. I'm not going to videotape it. So it's kind of the same process as before. I might, since there's so much extra yuckies here, I might end up rendering this one more time. If you're going to do this like three times, so we already did step one. If we're going to do it two more times from here, the next step you'll use um, a little bit less water, go through this process again, and then you'll go through a cheesecloth. So if you're, if you don't have a whole lot, then I would recommend going on to the last step, which is pouring it through cheesecloth, which we will come back to. I went ahead and decided to render it again for a second time doing the same process as step one. So I want to show you the difference. So this is the water, did water again, but see how much cleaner the water is. That's so much better. So when it gets to this point, that's when you're ready to move on to the last step which would be again straining it through the cheesecloth and we'll come back. So I'm going to go ahead and this is cooled. I'm going to break it into large chunks and put it back in a double boiler, this time with no liquid in it. And again, make sure that you have space between the bottom pan and the top pan. Really keep an eye on it because you don't have the water in with the wax. So you do have a greater chance of it heating up too quickly and getting too hot. So really keep an eye on that. And we'll be back in a little I bit. I'm back with the final filtering of the beeswax. So with the picture you saw before, I ended up having to do this one. This is the third time through. And sometimes you just, you can do it twice. Sometimes you do have to do it a third time. And it's almost done. So this is just the wax. There is no water in mixed with it. And I did forget to say a couple things earlier, but if you read through the blog, it'll be on there as well. But this is wax and wax is very hot. If it gets too, if it gets too hot, it can catch fire. So make sure that you have some type of fire safety around. Remember that oil and wax and water do not mix. So if it does catch fire, you need to have a lid. You need to have baking soda or flour or some way of putting it out nearby and not water. If you, depending on the type of double boiler you have, you may need to have oven mitts or heat safe gloves just to protect you or even wear goggles if you're doing a really big batch. And definitely don't do this. Do this with kids in the vicinity or even pets because you don't want to have any issues with that. The with the wax I was talking about earlier with the brewed wax not smelling very good. The other issue is a lot of times beekeepers will use smoke to calm down the bees, which is which is great and that's fine. But it does make the wax smell kind of like a campfire. It does go away eventually. So if you have some wax that you're wanting to use for crafts, I would definitely let it sit out, sit out in the sun and let that scent dissipate because otherwise you're going to end up with wax that does smell a bit like a campfire. With the last filtering, I'm going to use cheesecloth. You do not want to use a coffee filter. It won't go through it and you'll have a big mess on your hands. So cheesecloth, several layers of it. I have, um, I guess these are quilting clips. Sewing quilting clips is holding the cheesecloth to the side. And I will pour it through the last time. I'll get use the um, strainer. I can get my brain working. Use a strainer and this at the same time, and then I'll let it harden the last time. I keep these and use them for fire starters. It works really well for using as a fire starter. So it's almost done. There's one little chunk in there that still needs to melt. been storming off and on so if you hear any thunder in the background that's what that is from. Also make sure that you're never putting your face directly over it because if you accidentally splash you don't want that to get on you because this is it is hot wax. Almost done. my 
shims keeps popping up the side. Almost done. Say it's all melted. Turn the heat off, and then get ready to pour. So this is just an empty milk container that I cleaned out and cut the top off, and it was only used once. So when the wax is hardened, I'll have to cut down the size and then take it out. So again, depending, on, you may need to use some gloves for this. But since mine does have a plastic nail, it's nice and cool. it in and then we'll let this sit again for a couple hours to harden and I'll have one more quick little clip showing what the finished wax looks like now real quick while that is straining through if you have used cheesecloth to do jelly you know that if you squeeze it some of the pulp comes through so you want to, you don't want to do that with this because there is still some sediment in the wax that the cheesecloth is collecting. So you don't want to take a spoon and shell it all down in there because you'll end up pushing everything through and then you'll have to run it through the cheesecloth again. So just letting it sit, I'm going to, I'm not going to move this and let it harden and then come back in a couple hours and check on it. And we're back with the final video. I did end up filtering it through the cheesecloth twice. Since I wanted to use it for lotion bars, I wanted to make sure it was very clean. If you're just doing it for crafts or something that's not going to go on the skin, then you maybe could skip that process. So the first time, I um, wanted to show you how much it got going through the filter and then coming out the backside. So it did clean up a lot of it. And then the very last time, so this would be the fourth time, here is the little tiny bit that's left and it came through very clear. So I went ahead and cut off the sides. I did let this cool overnight because when it is thick like this, it does take quite a lot longer to harden. So you just pull off the sides, peel it off, and then you have a really nice clean bar. So for storage, I put this in a bag and just set it aside until I'm ready to use it. Some people will freeze it and then grate it. The harder it is, the easier it is to break off. What I like to do, because I measure out the ingredients by weight when I'm making lotion bars, is I freeze it and then I cover it and actually just hit it with a hammer and it breaks off chunks and then I just go from there. It just takes a whole lot less time than grating it. I have done that. Another thing that I have done is when you're going through the very last process of filtering it out, you can spread it out while it's still still liquid you can spread out on a piece of wax paper or parchment paper and then using a uh, a cheese slicer not a cheese slicer excuse me a pizza cutter then you can roll it into uh, little strips and, and use it that way so but this is what works for me but this is the final product so this is how much you get out of a whole tub of wax coming from the hive thank you